In this tutorial, we'll see everything about TV Paint interface. So at the top, you'll see some menus just here. So we have File menu, Edit menu, Project menu, Clip menu, Layer menu, Image, Effects, View, Windows, Custom panels, and Help. By the way, in the Help menu, you'll find some very interesting tool tips just here. The tool tips are um, these little tool tips, these little pop-up that appears when you are above a feature. So by default they are in full mode, like this. But for my very own comfort, I will disable them. If it's the very first time you're using TV Paint, I advise you to give them enable. Then, just under the menu bar, we have this little bar with different icons available. So those icons are just the most used feature in TV Paint. So we have create a new project, open or import a project, save the project, undo and redo something. So undo if you draw something and then you hit the undo arrow, you will undo what you've done. And if you click on redo, you will redo the line. The shortcuts for undoing is U. You can also use Ctrl Z or Command Z or Shift Z to undo something. To redo something, you have to hit Shift U. Then just on the right, we have different icons. Here, those icons are just for different panels. So we can see the main panels, the color panel, the tool panel, the timeline, the light table, the remote control, the navigator, the FX stack, the library, the guidelines, and the share manager. Then on the left hand side we can see this peculiar space. This space is called the drawer. A drawer is a place where you can stock some panels. So by default we have the main panel, the color panel, and the tool panel. Main panel and the tool panel both are linked together. I mean the option you'll have in the tool panel depends on the tool you are using in the main panel. So if you are using a drawing shape, you have the drawing tools available here. But if you are using, for example, the paint bucket or the cut brush tool or the selection tool, you'll notice the options available here are different. That's important to understand because if, for example, you are doing a selection and then uh, you wonder where are your drawing tools, you have to click back on a drawing shape to get the drawing tool. On the right hand side, you also have another drawer, like this. To make it pop, I have to put my cursor on the right hand side. So actually, the big interest of using drawers is their ability to pop up or um, to disappear following your needs. So for example, if you need a clear interface without the panel on the left hand side, you can click here on the little pin just there. And then the drawer disappears. If I need to get it back, I put my cursor on the left hand side and I click on the pin to make it still here. So, by the way, if I need to avoid this behavior on the right hand side drawer, I can use the pin as well. Then we have the drawing space just here in the middle. Keep in mind that you can't paint or draw outside the drawing space. I can draw on the grey area, only on the drawing space. At the bottom, last but not least, we have the timeline. The timeline is composed of two elements. We have the timeline that manages the timing, so you can create images. And you have the layer stack just here. Each layer can have its own duration his own place, and his own content without affecting the other layers. By the way, you can eventually take the timeline outside uh, of this original place. To do so, you can double-click on the name of the timeline like this, and so you can make it move. By clicking on this little arrow, you will put the timeline at the bottom again. By the way, just like the drawers on the left-hand side and the right-hand side, you can 
pin or unpin the timeline. Like this. Some shortcuts you need to know to use TV Pen in a pleasant way. First, a shortcut to pan the canvas, the drawing space. So, to pan the canvas, you can eventually use the different objects just here. You can move like this or like this. You can also use the little um, four directional arrows just here. So, you click on this button, you hold the click, and you move like this to move the canvas. And you can also use a shortcut. The shortcut is the key Alt on your keyboard. Actually, you can't change this key. This is the only shortcut you cannot change. So here we are panning, that's great. Now how to zoom in and zoom out. So we have the possibility to use the little plus and the minus just here. You can also use the values just here. So the value, um, the digits just here are the ratio zoom. If I use, for example, 75, Oop, I unzoom. I can also use this double arrow just here. If I hold the click on the double arrow and go on the left, I unzoom. And if I go on the right, I zoom in. You can also use another shortcut using the Alt key on your keyboard. So um, if you're just using Alt with the tip of your stylus or the left click, on your mouse, you will pan. And if you use the right click on your stylus or on your mouse and do a movement to the right or to the left, you will respectively zoom in or zoom out, like this. So actually it's really easy to go from panning to zoom in or zoom out, just with a simple key plus um, a right click or or a left click. Last shortcut, to zoom in or zoom out, you can use the superior and inferior key on your keyboard. Another shortcut regarding the Canva, you can eventually rotate the drawing space. To do so, you can hit this button just here, so you hold the click on this feature and you have an animator disk um, that appears and then you hold the click and go up or down to rotate the canva. You can also use the combination of keys Alt and Control. This is the same combination whatever if you are uh, on Mac or Windows or Linux. And so with just a simple click, so a left click on the mouse or the tip of your stylus, you can rotate the canva. And you can still, by the way, zoom in or zoom out using the right click. If you want to reset the um, position of the canva, you can make a right click on this icon and click on reset, or you can eventually use the shortcut shift home. Another very handy shortcut that I will use a lot, a lot during these following tutorials is the key backspace that actually emulates this little skull. So by hitting the skull or by hitting backspace, I will kill uh, what's in the current image on the current layer. 